Hello, today I'm going to be telling you all the anomalies in Starscape and their purpose. When I first started playing Starscape, I looked for a tutorial on anomalies, but I couldn't find any, so that's why I'm making this video. So I'm going to be talking about two different types of anomalies. Firstly, there are system anomalies, which you can find by launching a system probe. There are also planet anomalies, more commonly known as aberrations, which you need planet probes to find. Also, many of these anomalies won't spawn unless you're in a wild system, and the loot and certain types of ore found in these anomalies uh, will not be as good if you're not in wild, so I'd recommend being in a wild system. On to the common anomalies now. Firstly, there is the drone graveyard, which is displayed on your screen as BF. In this, there are several shipwrecks, which can contain some average loot. Also note that often drones will spawn here, so you probably shouldn't come here in a small defenseless ship like an otter or a marlin. These are generally not worth visiting, in my opinion. Next there is the AT Anomaly. The AT Anomaly is a small asteroid field. It can contain Coralite, Retinite, Gallium, Axnet, Narcor, and even Red Narcor if you're lucky. Also, many of these ores can be superior and pristine, meaning you get more out of it. On to the more uncommon anomalies. Next, firstly, there is the Spice Station, displayed as SP. It is a wrecked spice station, and there are a few crates of spice lying around. These spice crates can often contain the more rarer version of spice, like jasper, jade, and sapphire. Drones will also spawn here, so again, be careful. Next, there is the drone hangar, displayed as DH. As the name suggests, it is a few drone structures with many drones. These structures can contain decent loot when you destroy them, but um, if you don't have a corvette, a frigate, or a destroyer, you'll probably die. So if you're just exploring or mining, it's best to ignore these. CM Anomalies. These are a, basically a giant asteroid that have been split apart, and you can mine water ice cores here to get water. This is the only way to get water in the game, apart from buying it. Water can be used to create certain types of turrets, uh, and I think it may be used in the Player Stations update, but I'm not entirely sure, but it's handy to have some. Uh, AL anomalies are pretty much just the same as ATs, as I mentioned before, just a lot bigger. Next, there are monuments, displayed as MT. You may have seen a level 1 or a level 2 anomalies across the galaxy in Starscape, but this is a level 3 variant. It will bless you with a certain ability for half an hour, like mining efficiency or turret damage. They give you the same abilities as level 2 monuments, but often with higher buffs. There's also a small chance that it will give you 10 different buffs, well, I'm not sure if it's 10, but it's uh, quite a few different buffs, but that is quite rare to get. Also, it is common for a ring of pristine Coralite, Rechnite, or Gallium to spawn around them. If you don't know, ores can spawn as Inferior, Regular, Superior, or Pristine. So, when you go to refine it, Inferior will only refine into 1, Regular will refine into 2, Superior refines into 3, and Pristine ref refines into 4, so Pristine are the best uh, ones to get but a ring of the pristine ones are around them, so it is a very good, it's probably the perfect way to mine for these materials. Now we will cover the rare anomalies. Wormholes, displayed as WH, are sort of portals that will teleport you randomly to another system across the, cosmo, across the cosmos. Uh, they can, you, then you can walk back and forth between these systems until the anomaly despawns. Um, these can be quite useful for hauling, uh, as uh, I'll mention next. So, next are Frontier Outposts, displayed as FO. These are very cool structures, in two ways. So, if you're not aware, spice stations and space stations cannot spawn in wild systems, making it impossible to sell and buy spices. Uh, you can still collect spice from Rick spice station anomalies that I explained before, but you still can't sell it. Frontier Outposts allow you to sell and buy spice. Even better, you can buy the more various variants of spice, like sapphire and jade, for the same price you would find when you would normally buy spice. The other thing is, they have a market terminal, so you can buy certain types of loot, which and it's often very profitable. Uh, in this clip, I find a Frontier Outpost selling a coil gun four pro, coil gun four blueprints. These sell for a lot more on the player market, so this is a good investment buying these. Unfortunately, you can't swap ships or store items in Frontier Outposts. Uh, but then that would sort of ruin the mechanic of sp wild space. Labelled as very rare are Axnet fields, displayed as AA. These are small field. This is a small field of regular and pristine Axnet. Also, put in mind that regular Axnet um, only refines into one, and pristine only refines into two, unlike the other ores. The second rarest anomaly in the game is an AN. 
it is a small field of Narkor and Red Narkor, sort of a similar slice of the Axonet field. Finally, the rarest anomaly is the VX. It is a sort of spooky space, a spooky place with a re music, with one to three Vexnium ores. Vexnium is by far the rarest and most valuable ore in the game. To craft the most powerful ships in the game, you merely only need 20 to 25 of this stuff. Each piece of Vexnium sells for 4,000 credits on the player market, and considering you'll get about 30 to 40 in a VX anomaly if you're lucky, you can earn over $100,000 by selling them. However, there is a catch. As soon as you start mining the Vexium, two to five empty NPC ships will be will be spawned, labeled question mark question mark question mark. These ships are known as Crystalline Guardians. Crystalline Guardians each have ten thousand health and shoots and they may shoot rays of lightning every few seconds, dealing six hundred damage. This is enough to destroy any small ship and will quickly kill larger ships. Uh, here I have lined up my ship so it's ready to warp away as soon as I get the Vexium, as I don't want to risk losing my ship and I don't really need Vexium at the moment. If you want to mine Vexium, I recommend bringing a frigate, with, a frigate or a destroyer with beams to kill the Crystalline Guardians, although I will probably do a full tutorial on this in the future. Now that we have covered the system anomalies, there are two, di there are two different types of planet and aberrations. Firstly, there are R deposits. These contain one certain type of ore, like Coralite or Axnet. Uh, they can often be pristine, making our deposits a very good place to mine. Also, Narco fields and the Vexium fields can spawn here as well. The other type are called X structures. X structures are sort of big space station wrecks containing uh, different ores and uh, with chests. You can get a lot of different ores here, uh, and you don't even need a mining ship. You could do it with the Stratos. Also, there is a rare chance that an X structure um, as a satellite could spawn. If this happens, you solve a puzzle and you get an ancient beacon. Uh, this beacon shows a few different systems without showing their names. Uh, it's quite hard to find, but if you do find it, you can get ancient weapons, which can sell on the player, player market for a lot of money. Although it's a bit of a gamble because if you get good ones, it will be profitable, but if they're not very good ones, then it'll be a bit of a waste of time and money. Um, and put in mind your uh, ancient beacon will uh, uh, dissolve once you reach the system it's leading to. Um, however, I don't. Yeah, as I said before, it's not worth doing this in my opinion, since it takes a lot of effort. And the ancient beacon itself will sell on the player market for over a hundred thousand credits, which is a ton of money. Uh, and wherever you are in the game. Uh, that is it for this video. So please make sure to subscribe, since this took quite a long time to make. And I will be doing more Starscape tutorials like this in the future, so you probably won't, not want to miss them.